All right, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy for now. We got the fight about to go. Just had the weigh in between Errol Spence Jr. and your Danies Ugas. Both dudes look in tremendous shape. Let me tell you what I thought about the weigh in in this video and what I think was going to happen in the fight. Let's do that next. <laughs> Right, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Fanon. In this video, we're going to talk about Errol Spence Jr. versus Jordanis Ugas. Just had the big weigh-in. Both guys come in on weight one at 146 and a quarter. I do believe that that is uh, Jordanis Ugas. Errol Spence at 146 and three quarter pounds. I do believe is the weight for him. Uh, but before we get into that and what I saw in the weigh-in, let me welcome you back to the channel. If you are a longtime subscriber, thank you so much for your support on the channel. If you are new to the channel, thank you very much for continuing to watch it and watching this video. Make sure that you hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you can be notified of when we release more videos. We do videos pretty much every day during the week and have live streams six days a week. So there's plenty of opportunity to have good boxing talk about these subjects. All right, so let's get into it. Tomorrow night, the fight is here. First big, real big fight of the year. First real big fight in a while for me, in my opinion. Uh, you got Errol Spence Jr. coming back, um, fighting uh, fighting your Danis Ugas. The belt's on the line, three belts on the line. The WBA belt, which is your Danis Ugas, is the WBA super belt. You have Errol Spence with the IBF and the WBC belt. And uh, so, and this is a three belt unification fight heading into a undisputed fight, hopefully next with Terrence Crawford. Uh, the weigh in, both fighters looked extremely uh, good in the weigh in. Neither one of those the, of the fighters looked drawn. Uh, if I had to say who kind of, who may have looked the best in the weight class in that particular um uh, weigh in, I might give the edge a little bit to Errol Spence Jr. because Errol Spence Jr.'s muscles still looked full. He looked like, you know, he looked ripped. He looked very, very strong, man. And honestly, man, he looks like the dude is probably going to put up when he puts on water weight onto those muscles, which are which are already were uh, clearly defined. I think you're going to see a dude that really, really looks swole in the ring uh, tomorrow for your Danis Ugas's part. Your Danis Ugas came in, you know, well under the weight, you know, almost three quarters of a pound under the weight. Uh, also looked good, looked cut, didn't look drained, right? Didn't look tired. I also looked to, you know, make sure to see who was going to run for the water bottle first. Really didn't see it. Uh, really didn't see it. Uh, your Danis Ugos always, all, pretty much always looks like that in his weigh-ins. My opinion about Errol Spence Jr. though is that that's probably the best I've seen Errol Spence Jr. looking away weigh in in a, in a long time, man. Other ones, he's looked like, like the one for Danny Garcia and the one for Sean Porter. He looked more drained. Uh, he didn't really look like he still had, you know, like really good muscularity, you know, on him during the weigh in. And I think that that is a result of him, you know, making sure that he stayed down in weight the entire time in between fights, didn't allow himself to blow up. Um, and man, we should have a really good fight, man. As far as like the weigh in itself and the stare down, uh, two times in a row, Arrow was the first cat to, to turn away, man. And that's something I find real interesting, man. Like, like Ugas and Tick, you know, when they took that, um, and they both stared each other down. The thing that I noticed that Errol Spence Jr. didn't blink. He didn't do anything. He stayed for a reasonable amount of time for the pictures to get taken. And then he, and he turned his head, right? Just went on ahead and looked forward, right? As if he didn't care how long uh, your Danies Ugas stared him down, right? Now, your Danies Ugas, after Errol Spence Jr. turned to the side, your Danies Ugas continued to stare at him for a while. You know, maybe like, I don't know, two, three seconds or something like that, kind of with like a mean, kind of like a mean face on him, like, like almost like, you know, he was, you know, doing the traditional thing with the weigh-ins, like, you know, the first person to blink shows weakness. I don't believe that was the case in that scenario. I just think that Errol Smith Jr. is all, all business and was very non-emotional about it and wasn't really trying to prove a point to your Danies Ugas, where your Danies Ugas continuing to stare after he moved is trying to prove a point to Errol, trying to prove a point to the crowd that he's in it, that, you know, that he's not intimidated, right? Um, however, man, I don't really think that that is your Danies Ugas's personality. I don't think he's some big, mean type of cat, right? He, I would suspect to be the type of cat dude that after a 
you know, after a, uh, after a face-off would shake the hand of the other fighter and all of that. He didn't do that in this particular instance. So, you know, we just got two guys that are really going to be in that or looking to go at that fight. And this is what I think is going to happen in the fight. I think the fight is going to be a war. Just I can't see how it's not going to be a war. I see Errol Smith Jr. coming out in the first couple rounds, coming out in the first couple rounds. And I don't see a lot of feel out rounds in, in this particular uh, scenario. I think Errol Smith Jr. is going to come out. Pumping the jab to the body, pumping the jab up top, trying to change levels with it. And he's going to be trying to cut off the ring and 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 keep his space, you know, keep, you know, himself in position to hit your Danny's Ugas with every punch he throws pretty much from the beginning of the fight. Um, and I honestly see uh, your Danny's Ugas, you know, trying to do and go into that fight similar to the way he did um air uh manny pacquiao trying to catch errol spence jr on the end with that uh around the top of that uh, guard with that kind of looping right hand um because that's the way that he fought the, the southpaw in the very last fight that they have but um i don't think that he's going to have the same amount of success with that with manny pacquiao as he did I mean, with errol spence jr as he had with manny pacquiao because if you look at the way in between the two guys they're both of those guys roughly the same height have roughly the same reach the only difference between the two is that errol spence jr is a little bit more full and a little thicker uh guy but is not he's not doesn't he's not at a reach disadvantage he's not at a height disadvantage he's not at a speed disadvantage right and i don't think he's really at any type of technique disadvantage against your day against your danny's ugas the way that i see it going is aerosmith jr by a decision by and i think probably by a decision by a good amount if these guys really do get into some like exchanges and consistently, you know, really going at each other and Errol Spence Jr. is close enough to continually hit uh, your Danny's Ugas in that body. You know, this is not something that I'm saying about your Danny's Ugas because I've seen it in your Danny's Ugas, but just the way that your Danny's Ugas, that Ugas is built. I the guys with those really narrow, like really narrow waists and really narrow stomachs. I don't really think those guys typically take that, you know, take shots to the body as well as guys that have kind of the more broad, a uh, more broad um, abdomen area. Uh, and he just looks like the type of dude that that who who has a natural capacity to get broken down to the body, similar to like the way Julius and Dungo is built with that really narrow frame. Just really couldn't take shots to the body. And I think your Danny's Ugas usually is somebody that is able to keep people off of them with a jab. And he gets to kind of pick and choose when he's going to, you know, when he'll fight on the inside. And I think ultimately that that body work is what is going to be the difference in the fight. But again, I'm not going to underestimate your Danny's Ugas. I know that he's an exceptional fighter. And the thing about him is he's coming off of a very, very big win against Manny Pacquiao. So his confidence is flying. It's just if I had to read anything out of that, it read anything out of that um press conference it's that arrow seemed like he is just he seems like he's the stronger looking guy going into the going into the fight um and he also seemed like he was the one that is just more a little bit more in his comfort zone i really was kind of put off by uh your Danny's ugas attempt to stare him down after after it split because if what you're trying to do is trying to intimidate errol and you're going to go in the fight trying to intimidate him man the best thing that he can hope is that something is wrong with errol and that he ain't the same fighter because if he's going to try to really come and press errol in some big fight dude errol's going to be right there for that and I would and I would definitely give the advantage to, to a guy like Arrow who's going to keep that pressure and going to keep doing that throughout the whole fight versus doing it in spurts. But anyway, that's my take on the matter. You let me know what you think in the comment section. What did you think about the weigh in? Did anybody blink who you got going into it? Let me know in the comment section. And with that, I'm out. Peace.